Welcome to this week in Missouri politics. This week we are joined by Missouri's greatest living statesman, former Senator Kit Baum. We're honored to have you, sir. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your kind words. They always <laughs> help. Thank you, sir. You know, Good to be a, with you. it is such a great time. I'm so glad you was able to come on. The Bicentennial, uh, the governor's office and the, and the Bicentennial Committee, Mayor Turgeon and Jeff City, has done a great job celebrating the history of our state. And you've not only been a big part of the history of our state, you've been a big part of the celebration. Well, I was, I was really honored to be with uh, the governor and Mrs. Parson on the, on the 10th, the, the 200th flat anniversary of the day that James Monroe signed the article making uh, Missouri the 24th state in the nation. And the Parsons are really, are really emphasizing the heritage of Missouri, the great traditions of Missouri. And of course, having lived in the mansion, uh, I, I know how much history is there, oh, and yeah. they're doing a wonderful job with that. It's always it's a great place to, for, for Missourians to visit if they haven't. Our, we have one of the most beautiful capitals, mm -hmm. but we also have a very beautiful uh, uh, governor's mansion. And Sherry Childs and that crew do such a great job keeping that history. I took my son Gussie through it the other, uh, I guess about a month ago. And of course they had to make sure he didn't knock anything off or break anything, but it was, <laughs> it was so much fun. Oh, okay. You know, it's interesting, you know, listening to Governor Parson talk at the Bicentennial, it was so fitting. You know, there's a few voices that kind of, to me, it sound like Missouri. Yours, I go back and Mike Parson, just he's, Mike Parson, when he talks, you can tell he, he loves the state. He loves his tradition. He sounds like Missouri. Uh, he is. There's no question about it. And he's, uh, He's working hard. Yeah. He's not going to run for re-election going back to the farm. And I said, who knows, you might even run for school board or something. <laughs> but, but I Teresa think, may want to get him something to do, so he's not just laying around bothering her. I'm sure the Polk County schools are <laughs> in good shape, but he's available. But he, he is, he's wonderful, and, um, uh, and Teresa couldn't be a nicer first lady. That's a fact. We're, we're really fortunate in the state. So this state had uh, this particular Senate seat. You inherited it from Senator Eagleton, great statesman of the, of the state. Yourself, probably Missouri's greatest governor, one of his greatest senators. Roy Blunt, it would be so, I would think it'd be very intimidating to come in after you to the U.S. Senate. I really think Roy Blunt filled your shoes admirably. He does a great job. And uh, I wasn't going to retire until I found that Roy was ready to step in. And um, I also told Roy wants to make sure he gets a good person to succeed him. And I said, Roy, I'll, I'll help you, I'll work with you, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll do what I can to uh, support whomsoever you pick. So there's a bunch of choices right now for Republicans. Huh. Nobody would know what would make a better U.S. Senator than you would. What are some of the qualities that would actually, you know, you see the campaign rhetoric and stuff, but when you actually have to get in there and produce for Missouri, what are some of the qualities? That well, would make a good one. Number one, you need to know the state. You need to know the state, you need to know the people, you need to know what they're thinking. And you need to develop a sound platform of the things that you need, that the people of Missouri need. I talked about education and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, economic development, and I worked on that. Uh, Parson uh, has talked about workforce development mm -hmm. and uh, infrastructure things that I'm very interested in. Those, those things, um, it's amazing, uh, they, they are still, um, still on the front burner in Missouri. And people want to make sure they had, there, are, there are a lot of crazy stuff going on in schools these days. Yeah. And uh, they want to make sure that the kids uh, uh, learn the ABCs, not the CRTs. <laughs> I like that. So, uh, so it was interesting, I, I got my Herman pin on. You go from downtown Herman, you turn, you'd make a right and go north, you go over the Kitbon Bridge over the Missouri River. Uh, there's quite a few of those landmarks in the state that's, that folks have named after you because you actually made them happen. If you were putting together a platform to run for Senate, what would be in it? Well, I would, uh, number one, uh, you, need, you need to be familiar with the people. You need to talk with them and find out what's going on. You need to have a concise plan. If you have, if you have, Twelve different priorities. There's no priorities. Yep. You've got to find something uh, that fits in with uh, where the national government is going and what you can do for the people of Missouri. Reflecting on on 
what you hear from them as mm. you as you test as you test out these things. You need it. You need to talk to people, and you got some ideas, and they'll they'll either help you refine the ideas or help you put them in a the trash can. <laughs> and that's that's one of the secrets. And I mean, that, that that worked well for me. So a huge federal infrastructure package is moving. A bipartisan one looks like it's going to become law. Have you got to see about the details of that, or what is your initial thought when you saw? I mean, you know, I've always been a conservative, but it, it, it's undeniable the needs we have in infrastructure. What do you think about it as you've seen it come together? There's a lot of things in there that I would not have wanted to put in. Uh, the uh, environmental, the environmental counselors, mm -hmm. hiring people to go around, I guess, yell at people who are putting gas in their gas tanks, <laughs> and, and they are doing. Uh, they uh, government should make uh, progress possible in the private sector mm -hmm. through creating, the, creating the, 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 the basis for it, rather than try to spend money to create things. Government doesn't invest well. We saw that uh, with the Obama-Biden administration, Solyndra, and all of the other billion-dollar boondoggles that went down the to tubes. Mm -hmm. You need to make you need to make sure there is a possibility for the brightest and best to develop things uh, that will work in the market. And I am uh, there. There are lots of pros and cons on it. And I believe that uh, I believe that Roy voted for it because he felt that was that was the best outcome. But uh, right now, uh, the there's so much spending. Inflation is going up. Now, that inflation. Um, as uh, people are going to start feeling it, not only at the, at the, uh, at the when they gas up, killing the uh, uh, killing the uh, pipeline. Well, you can tell. I eat a, I eat a little bit of meat every so often, and I tell you, it's about a steak is probably a third more expensive than it was two years ago. I mean, it's, it is. Uh, the folks that say the inflation is not up that much, they're not in Butler County. Maybe these environmental counselors think inflation is not, but. How will the environmental counselors do in Audrain County? I don't think they. I don't think they do too well. I, no, they go like it. Never mind. <laughs> that. I will tell you, I will say that. I want to ask you one more thing. Uh, you mentioned President Biden. You're probably one of the few Missourians that actually know Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. what, what? What? Tell folks about him as a person. Well, he was a very likable, yeah. talkable, talkable person. But uh, I guess it was uh, a uh, fellow who had served as. Secretary of Defense, a Republican and, and Democratic administration, said for 47 years he's been wrong on international affairs. <laughs> and I, and I would, I'd go down, if there's international affairs, I'd go down to the well to vote, and I found out, if I found out that Biden and John Kerry were voting the same way I was, I'd go back and call my staff, <laughs> I said, are you sure we're right? Yeah, let's okay. reread it. Yeah, he, he uh, and unfortunately, uh, he's uh, well. The, I think that I will comment further on him, but he's a likable guy, very yeah. pleasant. So, uh, last question I want to ask you: Is there something that I know you've worked on for a long time, the Bond International Scholars Program? What tell folks what that is? Well, that's something that um, uh, we developed with working with uh, UMSL and UMC. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack Danforth raised. Uh, Significant amount of money uh, for for uh, what we thought would be a lecture series, mm -hmm. but lecture stu students these days don't need lecture series; they need something that would help them. And I talked to um, some of the uh, uh, political science people, and um, uh, particularly UMSO, and they said we've got a lot of young people who would love to study abroad, but they need a little bit of help. To cover the expense of going abroad, they could get the tuition over. So the Bond International Scholars was something we developed with the university and the support now of President Choi, yeah. which uh, would provide uh, $5,000 a semester, enable people, young people of Missouri who want to study abroad, to go abroad and learn about what's going on in the rest of the world. It's important. It's important. Uh, 
for culture and all those other things. But it's important for the economic development of the state. St. Louis has got a lot of it, used to have even more. We need to get it back so we, it has a lot of export business going on. And to do that, you need to understand the people you're selling to, and you need to be able to communicate with them. And there's nothing better than having a bunch of smart young people come back to the state having served abroad, and I hope probably getting internships mm -hmm. with international companies and helping build a cadre of folks who can help build the, build the economy of the entire state, not just St. Louis, but the entire state by uh, focusing on international sales, development, mm -hmm. and bringing businesses. Sure. I, I spent a lot of time bringing businesses internationally back into Missouri. I, told, I give a heck of a pitch on why Missouri is a great place to do business. It's a great place to do business, a great place to live, and a lot of the reason it is that great place is because of you, sir. Thank you for joining us. God, thank you very much. It's been a real, always a pleasure. Yes, thank you, sir. We'll have to get our Cardinals turned back around. We'll, well listen, I tell you, when I last saw they were ahead 6-4. to four. I don't know if they still held on. Yeah, well, they, 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 they're going to need a few more of those 6-4s. to fours. <laughs> but we'll, uh, we'll be right back with our Opinion Maker panel. But first, go to showmissouri.com. This is Missouri one county at a time. We met with old Lewis Riggs up in Marion County, learned all about the Palmyra Massacre and everything. Marion County. Go to showmissouri.com for the history of Missouri one county at a time. We'll be right back after this. All across Missouri, our new car and truck dealers are building strong local economies. When you buy a car or truck in Missouri, you're helping to support over 20,000 Missouri families who rely on the auto industry for good-paying local jobs. You're also helping fund our communities, schools, first responders, and our roads because dealers generate millions of dollars in tax revenue. Missouri's automobile dealers have been the foundation of our communities for generations and for generations to come. The Missouri Automobile Dealers Association, the heart of Missouri. For more than a century, the St. Louis Carpenters Union has shaped our communities. Through trusted alliances, we deliver skilled professional craftspeople while our business partners provide the kind of quality jobs that keep our economy humming. It's a blueprint that has worked since 1882. Turning Missouri into a right-to-work state stalls progress, wipes out jobs, and kills momentum. Right to work is wrong for everyone. Let's keep Missouri moving forward. Visit carpdc.org to learn more. Your energy needs are changing. That's why at Ameren, Missouri, we're not waiting on the future. We're building it with the Smart Energy Plan, advancing thousands of projects across the state, helping reduce emissions through cleaner energy sources, boost reliability with self-healing equipment, and better withstand storms with new composite poles. Moving Missouri forward and bringing us all a little closer together. That's energy at work. Welcome back to week in Missouri Politics. Opinion maker panel time. Alderman Jack Coder, welcome back to the show, sir. Thanks, Scott. Great to be here. I like the flowing hair. Oh, you know, COVID. Chance to finally grow the hair out. <laughs> Cora Faith Walker, former legislator, now uh, a person in the Page administration. Welcome back to the show. Glad to be here. Jim Murphy, the most quotable man of the Missouri Republican Party from South County. Welcome back, sir. Thank you for having me. And Steel Shippy, uh, you, have a, you, have, you have different titles. They're all esteemed. This one, now you're back at Victory, correct? That's right. Looking forward to it. Who at Victory is in charge of Lakin's hair? Because they deserve a raise. No one. Oh. <laughs> He's a talented guy. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to still call you representative because it's instinctive. So you hear, folks, um, you have the mask on. I've heard folks from far and wide have an opinion about masks. The one thing I have heard some detractors of, of uh, Dr. Page say is this was some sort of menacing thing. Now, politics goes into everything. I am of the belief that Sam Page honestly believes this is the right thing to do. And you can debate that and, and, and disagree, but I, I am of the belief Sam Page, his heart is in the place to try to do something he thinks is good. You know, I, I find it really interesting when folks say that um, he, he's done these sorts of things for political reasons, when you just see the sort of um, backlash that happens yeah. Yeah. Um, when, when he does it. Um, I can absolutely assure you that it is because of the Hippocratic oath that he took as a doctor that he's doing a lot of these things. I think um, sometimes he's almost cursed because he knows how a virus spreads and I have no idea. Exactly. I mean, and, yeah. and, and, but at the same time, I think that that is something that is part of our responsibility as public servants is to explain to people and help them understand and inform themselves. Explain to me why, as a person who's got the vaccine, why I should have to wear a mask in oh. St. Louis County. Well, yeah, I'm going to explain to you also as a person who has a master's in public health, yep. um, just what we've seen from the CDC about the highly transmissibility of the Delta variant. 
And the very fact of the matter is just based on um, the science and what the medical professionals have said to us um, and have told us is that even if you're vaccinated, there's still a possibility of transmitting COVID. And when you consider the fact that, especially children, I mean, you, you've got little mm -hmm. ones yeah. um, who are too young to get the vaccine at this point Millie in time. turned 12, she just got her first well, one. Congratulations, yeah. I, I, I'm sure that you feel some level of comfort sure, knowing absolutely. that now. And so, um, you know, really, I think a, a lot of this is just helping us to buy a little bit more time so we can get more people vaccinated and until we know from the FDA whether or not children can also get vaccinated. Jim Murphy, you had a law, that uh, the bill became law in the Missouri General Assembly. Mm -hmm. It essentially said, uh, there was some different versions of this, but yours was, okay, if you, the executive of a county wants to beg a health order, that's fine, good for them. Yep. They have to go at some point and get approval of the legislative branch. And it looks to me like your, your bill that is now the law in St. Louis City, Alderman Coder, they have not overturned the health order. There's probably right. shows there's broad support in St. Louis County. There might not have been broad support. It looks like your law worked. Well, it did. Um, and, and my point all along was that health professionals, their job is to, is to protect our health. Mm -hmm. And it's the legislative people that are elected by, our, by the citizens. It's their job to protect their liberties. And there's a balance here. And you can't yeah. have one without the other. And we thought that that got out of control. We think that the uh, max ordinance, the mask ordinance that just got overturned, should have been overturned, not because it's a bad idea, because it was a bad, bad uh, ordinance, first of all. Uh, for example, this qualifies under the mass uh, ordinance. Jim, you haven't had that since your wedding, night, have you? <laughs> because it covers my nose and it covers my mouth, but it does nothing for health. If you do a mask mandate in the city or the county, and you don't do it in Jefferson County, and you don't do it in St. Charles County, people just leave. They go to eat dinner over in Jefferson. Sure. It doesn't do anything to pre prevent the spread because they're, sp they're getting it there, they're bringing it back. If there isn't a better method, the thing we need to be talking about is, is vaccines. And so what we have done is now we have such a mixed ma message. Remember 15 days? Sure. 15 yep. days and this is gonna go away, it didn't happen. Then it was if we vaccinate the most vulnerable we can go back to our normal life. And that, the vaccine has done but a that lot didn't to keep work. from dying, right? But then they changed it. Then they said when it got to 50%, well, we're at 50%. Well, to be clear, and they've we moved, didn't change moved, it. The, 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 the goal the, line keeps changing. As and the virus changes, Representative. So what happened is we don't have enough people getting vaccinated. We've got the virus still running rampant and mutating and getting more infectious and causing more people to get sick. So if people would get their shots, if Republicans would step up and say, I'm vaccinated, you should get vaccinated too, to their constituents, we could beat this. Thing. And everything we do gets the vaccine-resistant people more reasons not to get the vaccine. We need to be concentrating on that. Jack, Carl, let me ask you a question about his law, though. So your districts is the crow flies, what are they, 10 miles apart? Yep. Not far, yeah. And, and so it is an interesting thing, though, in that 10 miles, I, if I had to guess, your district and, and the vast majority of the citizens of the city of St. Louis support a mask order, right? They do. I mean, they're frustrated. I know that. Talking sure. to my constituents, they're frustrated that we had to go back to a mask order. We're willing to do it because we want to keep our children safe. We want to keep, you know, the elderly safe and those that are vulnerable to breakthrough infections safe. But everyone's frustrated because, frankly, in the district I live in, most people have gotten their shots. And they got, they got their shot the first opportunity they had. A lot of them got, a, got to sightsee and see parts of Missouri they've never been Lucky before, folks. driving to the health centers in rural areas. Um, but there's certainly a level of frustration that we've had to go back to the mask order. But you're not seeing in the city of St. Louis the sort of backlash that we've seen at the county council. Um, and frankly, I'm not getting inundated with calls or emails of people saying, you know, this is a bad idea. I think people are willing to go along with the policy. What I, what I don't think they'll tolerate is further, you know, shut downs or restrictions on occupancy, but they'll happily wear their masks in public places. Still should be. I mean, isn't this some of the wisdom of Governor Parsons' theory of you let local folks make their decisions. If you tried to do a mask order in Popper Bluff, you get a bunch of burnt masks. I mean, that's all you'd have. If you do it the way they've done it, maybe the county doesn't support it, maybe the city does, but you have to have consent of the governor, right, at some point. That's right. And local control in Missouri plays out from how we govern our schools to how we do masks. And I think that that's the beauty of our state. And it's also to play into Jack's point about frustration. 
Frustration is a bipartisan effort here. We're frustrated because <laughs> yeah. we see leaders across the country, uh, mainly folks like you know Obama, who wants to have a 700 member birthday party bash, uh, and he gets praise and then says, "Oh, let's scale it back and do it in, a, in an appropriate way." So folks like Obama can have a birthday bash, but folks in Missouri can't even go to the state fair without being made fun of or chastised for going to the state fair for not wearing a mask, and uh, they're beat over the head and browbeat over, "Are we vaccinated? Are we not vaccinated?" Because you know, we keep you know waffling on <clears throat> does the vaccine work? Does the mask work? And the consensus. You think is just anybody at Sedalia going to care what the Post Dispatch thinks of their time at the state fair? <laughs> I mean, it's almost like people say, "Oh, Republicans should encourage more folks to get vaccinated." Most people don't care what their county commissioner thinks about a vaccine. Just like I don't care what anybody at the Post Dispatch or the Kansas City Star thinks about the state fair. That's go right. be a liberal, I retired person. I'm going to go eat a corn dog. I mean, well, I that's right. Care. Well, they, when people read the news, and uh, you know, frankly, in St. Louis, it's a very liberal biased news, which is sure. okay. You know, that's what you're going to get. But those liberal news outlets continue to push fear, fear mongering, and so that it doesn't work. It ain't worked. It doesn't Only work. Four eights in the deck. They played all four that's right. hate cards. I mean, so Jack, tell me this: uh, the schools. Yeah. This is where I think you see a problem. Because a five-year-old ain't going to wear a mask all day and try to learn something. I think you're seeing common sense start to hit. The schools, I think, are going to be where you start to have some rub of it. How do you do that? I think it's going to be challenging. I don't think, you know, broad, um, you know, rules, state laws prohibiting schools from making, you know, we talked about local control from, make, from school districts from making their own decisions are going to help. Um, I think you got to leave it up to the school districts and depending on the communities they're in and the amount of spread of the of the variants, but, you know, how we handle masks in schools. But it's certainly very concerning. You know, the little ones, I think they actually, you know, they'll do their best to keep their masks on. I mean, kids for the most part, follow direction pretty well. But we also know with this new variant, they are more vulnerable. We're seeing a, a big increase in the number of children uh, in our children's hospitals in the St. Louis region. So if we're going to go back to in-person learning, which I think we should, yep. I think we've got to at least try to wear masks until we have the the FDA approval to vaccinate these young kids. I hate it for the shins of the teacher that tries to put a mask on Gussie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, still should be though, I've heard people say trust the science, right? Believe these folks, these are scientific folks. They don't make emotions, they don't make rash emotions, they don't make political decisions. Then in St. Louis County, you saw this Dr. Faisal Khan. I believe probably has a well thought out vaccine plan, got a well thought out mask plan. Those are all things people can debate. But then he said he was called all these names. And look, maybe all the cops are lying. Maybe everybody in the tent is lying. You don't know. There's not proof of that. It's hard to prove that you were warned. But then he says he got pushed and surrounded and intimidated. Well, now there is video showing the guy walking out of the room and then flipping folks off. It, you trust the science or do you, do you not? I mean, it, it's pretty common sense. I don't know what you call science, but when I walk, I watch, I walk out of a place and not be touched, then he says there are a bunch of Donald Trump racists that surrounded him. It just didn't happen. Yeah, that's the hypocrisy that people are just, quite frankly, just fed up with. Um, whether you're in St. Louis City or you're in, uh, you know, Sedalia, Missouri, folks are just fed up with the fact that we do not have a consistent message because it's more of a politics. It's more of a politi political message and people are just fighting about. Um, yeah, you can't blame Donald Trump or something. Yeah. I mean, right. Corey Walker, I have watched you in the state legislature. I have watched people take public policy debates and turn them into personal attacks. I have watched you handle the folks doing this. They're citizens of Missouri. They paid your salary. You, you dealt with it with dignity and grace. Never saw you flip off a constituent in my life. Never, Never saw you even come it. close. You don't act that way. And then come out and say you're a scientist with great judgment and, and sober thought. Those two things don't go together, do they? Well, you know, I think the thing that's most unfortunate about this is that it's become a distraction from what sure. is actually the issue. And that is the COVID-19 uh, uh, virus. And, you know, I, I really want to go back to this idea that masks and vaccines have to be mutually exclusive because they aren't. And they especially aren't when you're talking about kids who are too young to get the vaccine. And so I, I think that, you know, we've had to make a lot of sacrifices. This country has been built on people coming together and doing the sorts of things that need to be done for the greater good. And so, you know, it's inconvenient, yes. I know Gussie will probably not like to wear a mask, but I also probably know he not. will like to listen. He will listen to his dad. And so I think, you know, it will be a little bit un uncomfortable also might for, be helpful. <laughs> for folks for a while, but I think that's something that we should all be willing to do. Folks have come for you in the legislature that you disagreed with. They've told you things you didn't want to hear. You probably didn't take it all that well. They don't walk in there and flip you off. No. It's hard to take someone serious when they're doing that than lying about it. I don't reply to the people that call me the idiot of the month, and uh, <laughs> I would never flip anybody off. Uh, but talk about science. CDC says that cloth masks may be effective. They don't say they are effective, they say they may be effective. I had a mother come to me and said, 
Melville School District says that two-year-olds have to wear a mask. There's a report out that says a long-term wearing of a mask for a child can be harmful to them because uh, the, the amount of uh, CO2 that they take in can, can be, be harmful if over 15 minutes. Well, they're in school for much longer than that. She says, how can they tell me this? And we're saying, well, let's follow the science. Well, the problem is we don't really know what the science is because we haven't been in this long enough to know for sure. So I'm not going to tell that mother that you've got to risk something on your child. Everything we do is a risk. Getting a vaccine is a risk. Not getting a vaccine is a risk. Wearing a mask is a risk. Not wearing it. But it should be up to the people to decide what type of risk yes, they they're willing to take. Absolutely. I got one thing, Representative Walker, former representative. As long as I've known you, talked about Medicaid expansion. It looks like now it's going to happen, right? Yeah, yeah. Finally, um, ten ten long years. Um, I, I was just saying to Alderman Coder that, uh, gosh, it was probably about that long ago that we were um, phone banking uh, yeah, we're to try to get phone folks uh, for Medicaid expansion. informed about Medicaid expansion. And so it, it had certainly been a long, hard, arduous journey. Um, and and here we are. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, folks starting to get enrolled. All right. Uh, Representative, you were with your colleagues this weekend for the HRCC meeting. Right. The courts ruled. What's going to happen now? I think we'll fund it. Wait till January and fund it? Fund it. You've got the money. Republicans going to be go after initiative petitions now over this? Absolutely. Yeah, I think so too. All right, Alderman Coder with a minute left, who won the week? I think the 275,000 uh, Missourians who are now going to have access to Medicaid won the week. Who won the week? You heard uh, Senator Bond talk about him earlier. Joe Biden. His infrastructure package. I liked how Cinder Bond described him. He he's so classy. Started off with he's a good guy, but then he couldn't help but yeah. tell you the disagreements. And then he ended <laughs> with, as, as Cinder Bond would, he's a good, fun, he's a friendly man. What a statesman. Who won the week? Citizens of St. Louis County no longer have to wear a diaper on their face. <laughs> Who won the week? Scott Fitzpatrick lands a uh, former state party leadership in the race for auditor. So uh, he's uh, started out the gate really well in that race. I got to say, I was in Jeff City for the bicentennial celebration. It was outstanding incredibly well done. Mayor Turge and the, the committee of folks that put that together did a great job and it was a very fitting uh, fitting celebration of Missouri. And we will see you next week from the State Fair with Governor Parson for This Week in Missouri Politics. Politics sponsored by the Missouri Association of Career Fire Protection Districts, Spire, and Sterling Bank. Guys, thank you so much for watching the show. I want to tell you about a new thing we're offering. It's the Missouri Times Podcast Network. You'll get this show every week. If you want to listen to it in your car, you don't have time to watch it. You'll get our show in Missouri podcast, History of Missouri, one county at a time. You'll also get our midweek update. Once a week, I throw up the uh, Facebook Live. I, 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 we talk politics, usually eat a lunch and discuss politics. You'll get to hear all those things come right to your phone. Subscribe to us on iTunes or Android, Missouri Times Podcast Network. Please join us and subscribe.